another type of function that we can you know do the derivative for a quadratic function right so the basic quadratic function right the most basic one we can have is f of x equals x okay right and then the more complicated ones then they throw in linear terms constants and, and you know some scale right well, let's just start with this one okay so if we want to compute let's say let's say this corresponds to you know the height a cat has fallen at time t time x now let's say t okay so let's say this is given by f of t Okay, so then, you know, how fast is the cat falling at time t equals 1? Let's say this is time in hours, and let's say height in meters. Okay, time t equals 1 hours. Right, how fast is it falling at that time? Well, that's the derivative f prime at 1. Okay, the derivative is given by the limit as delta x goes to zero of the average rate of change of this. Right, so f at one plus delta t. Let delta t go to zero. Delta x, delta t, whatever I'm using for my variable. I'm using t, so I'll use delta t. Right, so f at one plus delta t minus f at time one divided by delta t, right? This is the, uh, in red here, this is the average between time t equals one and time t equals one plus delta t hours. Okay, so the average speed between those two times gives us this expression here. And then we're taking the limit as that time interval goes to zero to get the instantaneous rate of change there, or the speed at that point in time. Okay, so let's write this out, right? So this gives us limit as delta t goes to zero of one plus delta t squared minus one squared divided by delta t. Okay, so this is equal to zero. 1 squared, 2 delta t, delta t squared, 1, all that over t, right? We still can't plug in delta t equals 0 yet because we'll be dividing by 0, but we can cancel these 1s, right? And then we're left with limit as delta t, 0, 2 delta t plus delta t squared, over delta t. We still can't plug in delta t equals zero yet, but we can cancel out a delta t because it shows up everywhere. And so this becomes, when we divide out the delta t, this becomes two plus uh, delta t. Right? Delta t squared divided out delta t gives us just one delta t. And then this is just a linear function. Right, so we can plug in delta t equals zero, right? We're not dividing by zero anymore, so we get, okay? And then our units, right, if we were to keep track of this, right, the units of our average speed would be meters hour. Now I'm realizing that I should have made this seconds or something, but, you know, I said they're hours, so they're hours. He's falling extremely slowly. I, I guess he's, I don't know, in some sort of strange gravity. So meters per hour, the units that I decided before I thought this through. So the units down here are going to be meters per hour. Right? That is the cat's speed time one. Right? This is f prime one. Okay. And so in general, right? For general time. What's the speed? Let's find this in general. Let's say a general time t0, f prime at t0, right? That's limit delta t0 of f at t0 plus delta t0 divided by delta t, 
okay that's our average rate of change and then we are taking the limit at that time interval goes to zero this becomes zero plus delta t squared minus squared over delta t out better limit goes to zero right so then we factor that out limit delta t of t zero squared plus two t zero t minus plus delta t squared minus t zero squared all that over delta t we still can't plug in delta t equals zero yet but we can cancel right let's cancel the delta t squareds we're left with limit delta t zero t zero delta t plus delta t squared over delta t still can't plug in delta t equals zero but we can cancel it from both sides on the top okay, so gives us limit delta t goes to zero of two t zero right the delta t's cancel plus delta t right? the squared cancels with the delta t on the bottom so leave just delta t right and now we can plug in delta t equals zero because we're not dividing by zero anymore right so that gives us two times t zero okay that is for general time t0. So for f of t squared, we found that the derivative of this function is the function 2t0, right? 2t. Okay. So for every point t0, this was the derivative. So then the derivative function is 2 times. Okay. Let's do another example. Right. Let's say we have an object dropping from a height of 50 meters on a planet where gravity has acceleration planet with gravity uh, where gravity has a. Okay. And so a is just some some number okay and so the distance right above the ground is going to be m of t equals 50 minus a over 2 t squared okay so this is our Distance above the ground function for the distance above the ground. All right, so if we want to find you know the speed of our object, right? So this is the distance. Let's find the function, right? Find the velocity function or the derivative function, right? right? If this gives us distance. As a function of time, then the derivative of that will give us the velocity, okay, the speed. Okay, so let's do this out. If we find a point t zero, right, then this gives us. Let's do the. I don't want to write limit a hundred times. All right, so let's start with average velocity. Time t equals t zero and t equals t zero plus delta t. Nice in general, but I don't want to write out limit a hundred times, so we'll start with the average speed. Okay, so the average speed, right, is delta m over delta t, right? Where m is m of t plus t t zero minus m of t zero divided by t zero plus delta minus t. Okay, and well, let's write out what this function becomes, where we get uh, let's back 50, right, minus a over 2, t zero plus delta t squared, minus 50 minus a over 2, t zero squared, for this m of t zero term. 
all that divided by delta t on the bottom. This is looking very similar to the kind of the derivative. Oops. Okay. Derivatives we've taken before. Okay, so nice thing is our 50s will cancel. Okay, we have a over two minus a over two t zero squared plus two t zero delta t plus delta t squared. So this is familiar from the last time we did this kind of uh, average rate of change of t squared. Okay, and then 50 cancels, so we're left with plus a over two. Okay, and all that is divided by delta t. Okay, so then we can cancel some more things. So in this step, the 50s canceled. Okay, and now it looks like the a over two t zero squared will cancel with this a over two t zero squared. Right, but let's factor it out first. This gives us negative a over two t zero squared okay, plus minus a two times two zero delta t minus a over two delta t squared plus a over t zero squared all that over delta t. This gives us this one is going to cancel now. This term, okay, and these twos are going to cancel. So we're left with negative a t zero delta t minus a over two delta t over delta t, which we can simplify as long as delta t isn't zero, right? So when delta t is not zero, this gives us negative a t zero minus a over two delta t delta t not equal to zero, and it's undefined when delta t equals zero. Right, so then we can find velocity right, is the limit as delta t goes to zero of the average velocity, which we just computed here, right? This was the average velocity, right? The velocity at that time, instantaneous velocity, the speed at that point, is this average when this time interval that we took the average over goes to zero. Right, so this is this limit of delta t zero of our function negative a t zero minus a over two delta t, right? Because this is the value of that average velocity when delta t is not zero. When we're taking this limit, delta t isn't equal to zero, right? We're just approaching it from either side. So until you know we plug in delta t equals zero, this is totally fine. Okay, and because uh, this is no longer dividing by zero or anything like that. We can plug in delta t equals zero to find the value of this limit. So even though this function here might not be defined at delta t equals zero, we can still find the value of the limit. Okay? So we plug in delta t equals zero. This gives us negative a t zero minus negative a t. Okay? So, right, we remember what our function was. And our function f of t was 50 minus a over 2 t squared, right? And this derivative we just computed is f prime of t equals negative a. Right? So this was at a point t0, then this is it for time t right, in general. Right? So this is the derivative function of this, right? And you can see that we basically apply this derivative rule to t squared. Applied derivative of, you know, squared and also this 50, right? And of 50. And then we added them together, right? So let's say this was function t and 50 was our t, right? Then we could have written our f of t at h of t minus a over t, right? And so if we take the derivative of this, we haven't learned this yet, but basically the derivative of a function is going to be, uh, the derivative of a sum is just going to be the sum of derivatives, and the scalars are going to stay there as well. And so this is just a constant that's multiplying our derivative, right? So then our h, right, we saw in the last video, right? 
set for a constant function, the derivative zero. Okay, and we saw, you know, just above that derivative of this function is two. Okay, so we get zero minus a over two, which gives us negative two a. Sorry, the a, the twos cancel, so you get negative a, which is what we just computed up there. Okay. So that's you know kind of how you would do do it for you know the most basic uh, quadratic function, right? Just t squared. Okay, and then doing it for kind of a more general quadratic function, right? Where you have t squared times theta plus a constant, right? And we'll learn you know in the next uh, the next set of videos in the next section that you can compute these things by doing you know some product rules and stuff like that. Okay, so here we did it by hand, but we noted that it's exactly the same as kind of combining these different derivatives of the different pieces of our function.